While the Ravens have soared high since that team could not have gotten off to a better start. You'll be on this journey with me. Hey guys, now joined inside Nats Park. Did Roquan Smith intentionally take a subtle shot at the Ravens offensive coaching staff during his Wednesday press conference? I'll let you guys be the judge of that. And of course, I'll weigh in as well. Coming up in this episode, which is presented by my friends at BetUS. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. And with that, I'm glad you're here. As always, I'm Bobby Trossett. This is where I bring you Baltimore sports and beyond. And welcome here inside the channel right now on BetUS.com. They've got some prospects and the odds for those prospects to end up in Baltimore. Eight days out from the NFL draft. Looking forward to providing coverage all weekend long. Blake Corum, the Michigan running back. First of all, Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. are not ending up with the Ravens, barring something unforeseen. Blake Corum, plus 1,200. Perhaps a mid-round pick option for the Ravens at running back. They could use some help bolstering that room. Keaton Mitchell's not expected to be ready to go week one. It's just Justice and Derek. Uh, Xavier Worthy, the speedy wide receiver who broke the 40-yard dash combine record in February out of Texas. The Ravens reportedly hosted him on a top 30 visit. He's currently at plus 1,500, but this is just, I mean, this doesn't even scratch the surface in terms of what is available to you right now on BetUS.com. And as it relates to the NFL draft, Look at all these different categories you can select. And just for the purpose of showing you what's up, I'm going to go with the team first pick. That'll bring me over here. And, of course, it goes team by team. But we're going to keep it Raven-centric, of course. And so it takes it literally a breakdown position by position. I'm going to go with a sneaky need. And I'm going to stick with the Ravens' philosophy, which is best player available. And perhaps a Cooper DeGean. Maybe not the biggest need at cornerback, but he is available at 30, and perhaps that's what the Ravens could look into. Risking 50 wins me 250. I'm going to take a shot, and we'll see what the Ravens end up doing in the opening round of the 2024 NFL Draft. Allow me to just tell you real quick as well while we're at it that BetUS is the number one online sports book. And they're currently offering a 125% deposit match up to 2500 bucks on your first three deposits. That means if you invest $500, you'll have over $1,200, $1,250 to be exact to play with. BetUS has 24-7 customer service, 24-hour payouts. And if you click the link that's in the top of the video description below, you will receive your bonus. A special thank you to BetUS for sponsoring my show and my channel not only all of football season, but into the offseason as well. And if you want to make a wager, make a bet, throw some cheddar out there ahead of the draft, a great way to do so is at BetUS.com. Here's what Roquan Smith had to say about the addition of King Henry earlier today as I taped this just before 6 o'clock on Wednesday, April 17th. Yeah, no, I think that's huge. I think it's going to uh, make us stick to uh, what we do. Uh, having a guy like him, uh, anytime you, you need a play with him and Lamar back there, I think it's going to be crucial. I'm excited. It's going to open up a lot for everyone. Uh, going against the guy, I know the type of threat that he opposed to other defense. So it's going to be scary. I'm excited to see. And as I would say, I'm glad that I'm on the defensive side and watching those guys, cheering them on, play in and play out. Told a couple of my friends in the offseason, season maybe I'll have to get some popcorn on the sideline and you know while I'm watching those guys go to work so I'm definitely excited I think it's a great piece uh, added to us and it's gonna help us get to where we want to be well great to hear from Roe his first I think the first time we've actually heard from him in in a formal medium media excuse me setting since the AFC championship loss so great to hear him hear from him uh the the big takeaway here the headliner was, of course, the popcorn quote, right? But what stood out to me in the beginning, and if you missed it, just take a listen for the first, like, five seconds. Yeah, no, I think that's huge. I think it's going to uh, make us stick to uh, what we do. Uh, having a guy like him, uh, anytime you, you need a play with him and Lamar back there, I think it's going to be crucial. I'm excited. All right. That's huge. I think it's going to make us stick to what we do. Subtle. Yet in every aspect, we get what he's hinting at there. 
Do I think this was an intentional shot at the Ravens coaching staff? Todd Munkin in particular? No, I don't. That's not who Roquan is. But what I think has been ingrained in these players' minds all offseason long after that heartbreak in the AFC Championship game is probably trying to come to terms with the fact that they got away from their bread and butter. Now, we've talked about this at nauseum at this point, so I'm not going to continue to beat a dead horse. But the reality is you can dissect any given aspect of that game, whether it's the Zay Flowers fumble at the goal line, whether it's the triple coverage interception that Lamar was targeting Isaiah Likely on, or most notably Todd Munkin's decision to really lean away and only give his running backs six combined carries. That's not going to get it done, and it will not be acceptable when Derrick Henry is a part of this team week one moving forward in the 2024 season. So again, I don't think it's intentional whatsoever, but to me, it's understood internally what ultimately was one of the deciding factors in a do or die playoff game with a trip to the Super Bowl on the line. So that's really all I I have to say about that. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Intentional or unintentional? Here's more from Roquan about his new running mate, the projected week one starter, second year inside linebacker out of Clemson, Trenton Simpson. No, Simp, uh, just been like even talking with him this uh, offseason, even throughout last season. I know the type of respect he has for the game um, and for himself as well. And the way he's been busting his tail, like all offseason, talking with Scott and everyone, how he's, you know, the guy's busting his tail, want to be the best. And I know his mindset. So I'm excited. He has all the potential in the world. It's just going to be about putting that on the field uh, week in and week out and just uh, trusting his ability. And if he does that, like, I think he'll be the best second year linebacker uh, in the league, in my opinion. What a situation to walk into your rookie year. Yeah, you probably would have wanted to play more if you're Trenton Simpson. By the way, probably need a new nickname upgrade from Simp. How about give him, like, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but make sure you guys come up with some ideas and tag Roquan on Instagram. He's not on Twitter because Simp, I think we could do better than that. But think about the situation he walked into. Sure, probably would have wanted to play more in his rookie year, but you're learning from a perennial all-pro and one of the game's great linebackers today in row. You've got PQ, who just the last two years and going into last year was a budding linebacker who ended up getting paid by the Pittsburgh Steelers in free agency and priced his way right out of Baltimore. We all know that. You had Zach Orr, whose career was cut far too short, far too soon due to injury, but now he's one of the rising young defensive minds, one of the youngest defensive coordinators in the league on this ascension that has been really fun to watch and is still very much a dog. He's young, he's relatable, and he understands how to play linebacker. For Trenton Simpson, that's a heck of a situation to walk into. I don't think I'm going to sit here and be naive and assume that there isn't going to be, you know, a rookie learning curve, so to speak. But I will sit here and say that I think he is in a fantastic situation. Roe is a hell of a mentor. He demands excellence out of you. And I'm expecting a lot from Trenton Simpson in year two as his first full season as a starter. Another guy whose first full season is coming in Baltimore. Well, not first full NFL season. He's got a lot of NFL miles on his tires. But the fact that Derrick Henry, King Henry, the NFL rushing king, right today's generation at least, is showing up to voluntary workouts, the off-season program. I think, to me, that establishes an expectation. And even though he doesn't necessarily need to prove himself to anybody in that building, he thinks otherwise. And I love love that. Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, uh, know, I'm the new guy, so I want to make sure that, you know, I show up and I show my teammates and show the organization I'm I'm here, I'm committed, and I want to come work and want to put the work in be around my teammates and um, develop that relationship with them and um, you know, just really just putting the work in and work as hard as I can while I'm in the building. I don't know about you guys. I mean, it may be easy to overlook, but to me that you can't put a price tag on that mindset. Derek is a, a veteran, a true veteran with a ton of NFL miles on his tires, right? And all the accomplishments 
in the book as an NFL running back, aside from a true postseason resume in terms of what he's chasing and what a lot of these guys in Baltimore are chasing, and that's a Lombardi trophy. But to me, that's just something that it's almost like a trickle down effect. Like that sends out shock waves internally. And it just shows you like, Hey, I'm here. I'm not only here to compete. I'm not only here to continue to extend my career, but I'm here to chase championships. And it starts today. I'm not saying that anything throughout this off season program will lead to wins or losses per se specifically. But what I'm saying is that message that he's sending, whether it's indirect or direct to his teammates and the organization, that's a winning mentality. And that's something that's easy to get behind. Here he is. Look at the look at the physique. Look at the build. Look at the mass. No wonder why he's been able to sustain and maintain throughout his NFL career. And just for the Ravens' sake, let's hope that continues to be the case in the health department. And speaking of the health department, new strength and conditioning coach who's gearing up for his second full season as the head of the department, Scott Elliott, in wake of Steve Saunders being let go a year ago. He met with the media earlier today and talked a little bit about injury prevention, which in recent years, based on the storyline around the Ravens in that category, you know it's always going to be relevant. Yeah, yeah. Um, You can't be the best version of yourself if if you're not available to play. So, you know, there's an old saying that the, the greatest ability in football is availability. And second to that is repeatability. You know, can you do it time and time again? Um, so, you know, there's a couple things that play into that. Uh, strength through full ranges of motion, I, I, I put a high priority on. Um, and then in a controlled environment, put them in positions and in places that we can strengthen so that when they're put in it out in a dynamic environment, they've been there before. because. Injury can occur when, it's, when the body's put in place that hadn't been before. It's got to react. So we're trying to kind of train that to a degree. All right. I said it during the lunch hour live stream earlier today after the press conference is wrapped, and I'll say it again now. I like what Scott Elliott has done in terms of rejuvenating the strength and conditioning department. I think he's young. I think he's relatable. I think he's energized. And I think he's brought a couple different specific nuances to training at the Ravens. And I'll lean on what some players in the past have shared with me. And of course, we all saw play out through the NFLPA-led report cards last March, not this past March, two Marches ago, which just torched the Ravens' strength and conditioning department, the training room, everything about it. And what I'm hearing now is that these training regiments are a lot more specialized to Okay, what's the best way to describe this? Specialized in the sense that they are tailored, right? They are tailored to your needs as a pro. That could be based on service time in the league. That could be based on injury history. That could be based on position, positional breakdown, overall goals, right? And so in the past, it was so wide open and not specialized to 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 meet and respect those categories that I think it became a really point of contention and frustration from a player personnel standpoint inside one winning drive. And so I think Scott Elliott, even though he comes from the Steve Saunders tree, so to speak, having worked underneath him for several years, I think he's brought in his his own flavor and a new element putting aside the old school habits and philosophies of strength training and bringing in some of this new influence. And to me, I don't know if there's a way to measure that specifically in terms of the effectiveness of it. But as far as I'm concerned, aside from Keaton Mitchell, Marlon Humphrey, a couple other things here and there, the Ravens were a really healthy team a year ago. And again, I think Steve Saunders, you know, sure, he was a polarizing figure, no question. The last couple of years under his belt, it was an injury riddle to say the very least. He had the, the suspension during the pandemic for violating policies in the building, things of that nature. But at the same time, it's really hard to measure and try and get down to the cause of, let's say, non-contact injuries, right? That's, that's a very difficult thing to 
to, to come to terms with. And so while I absolutely believe there was, there was change that was necessary to be had, like, is any of that stuff really, really measurable? Some of it is, no doubt. But all I really know is that the Ravens are in a good position right now. You can tell morale, team morale, individual morale, strictly speaking to the strength and conditioning side of things, is in a good place. And that's all you can ask for. They made the change, and now you move forward. I want to shout out and thank a couple of my returning patrons, Allie Mills and Brian Spar. Thank you both for believing in what I'm building here in Baltimore. I appreciate you guys for all the support that you give me on the back end. This is your monthly shout out, that $4.99 level tier. It's a great way to support the channel. If you guys are interested in doing the same, visit patreon.com forward slash Bobby Trossi. You can click on that link that I have included in the show notes below. If you want to learn more and get started today, draft tickets are available right now as well for our inaugural event coming up on opening night to celebrate the first round of the draft at Soundstage. Ticketmaster has tickets available to you right now. You can click on the link in the video description below. So with that, I'm going to jump. I appreciate you guys for dropping by. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the Bobby Baltimore YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. And I'll talk to you guys soon.